Hello everyone and welcome to this demo on the Accelerated Upgrade tool for the Cisco iOS XR software. My name is Kashish Golani and I am a systems engineer in the Cisco Customer Proof of Concept Labs in London. I am going to introduce you to a new tool called the Accelerated Upgrade tool that is developed by Cisco, which is still in beta release but is available to public as open source software. Following is the agenda for this session. I will start with the details on the setup of this tool. I will also walk you through the mandatory options for the tool and talk about some other optional CLI arguments for this tool. After that, we will discuss in detail all the pre-upgrade steps that are executed by the accelerated upgrade tool before starting a software upgrade process. I will follow you I will follow that with some examples of the pre-upgrade check failures. After all the pre-upgrade checks are done, the next thing that I will talk about is the upgrade and the post-upgrade process. I have some CLI examples for you to demonstrate this smooth install process and the XR software upgrade process with and without the Turbo Boot option. And last but not the least, we will go through the roadmap and some caveats and I will also give you some important links which will give you more information on this tool. So let's begin this session. You all must already be aware that it takes a long time to upgrade an iOS XR software. This is due not only due to the time it takes to copy and activate the PI files, but due to the pre and post upgrade work that is required to be done on the device during the upgrade process. So this tool is basically an automation of the entire iOS XR software upgrade process. So firstly, you will need a system on which you will install this tool. And from this system, you should be able to connect to your XR device. You will need to install Python on this system. You can use this link on the slide to, to download Python and install it. Once you have installed it, make sure that you read the readme file. It will tell you that you need to double click on the update shell profile command to add the bin directory to your shell's search path. Once that is done, you need to install the accelerated upgrade tool. You can use the link on this slide to download it. Once this tool is installed, you can execute it with the minus H option and you will see all the available options that you have to run this tool. The accelerated upgrade is the most important module of this tool and it assumes that the Python is installed in your router slash bin directory. So the first time you run it, you might come across this error message. In order to fix this, you need to modify the accelerated upgrade file to change the line router slash bin slash Python to the correct path on your system where Python is installed. You can find the correct path by using the which command and it will tell you the exact path on your system where Python is installed. Following are the mandatory options for the AUT tool. First and most important is the login username. The, that is specified using the minus L option. The login password is specified using the minus P option. The minus D option is to specify the device that you want to upgrade. You can specify either the console access or the management IP address using the minus D option. You can also use the AUT tool to upgrade more than one device. And if you do that, then you can specify a list of all the devices that you want to up upgrade using a file and specify that using the minus D option. The minus R is for the repository path. This is the path where the packages are stored. The protocol options that you can use are TFTP, SFTP and FTP. So you have to in firstly 
make sure the packages are downloaded from the cisco.com website and stored in this repository path and your device needs to be able to reach this repository path and last the option is minus f which is the package list file this file basically contains a list of all packages that you want to install on your system so these are the five mandatory options that you need to specify in order to execute this tool the next section are the optional uh, other argue, uh, options that you can use if you have a lot of intermediate servers that you need to uh, first reach in order to reach the device then you can specify the list of those servers using the minus T option the minus T is for the terminal uh, the default is to use both SSH and, and Telnet if you need to execute a list of commands that you want to back up before the upgrade process you can uh, use a file uh, and specify it with a minus C option and put in all the commands that you want to back up in that file the default is for the tool to exit if it there is any failure in any of the pre upgrade steps so if you want to continue and ignore all those failures you can specify the minus k option minus v is to execute with verbos if you want to execute anything on the standby you can specify the telnet uh, the console address of the standby using the minus s option minus m is to send an email uh, an um, email to an uh, address uh, once the script is finished processing now there are three other options that you can specify if there is a possibility to only run the pre upgrade or the post upgrade checks uh, using this tool so if you want to do that you can specify just the pre upgrade checks only or the post upgrade checks only and if you just want to upgrade the device without any checks you can also do that using the upgrade only option and lastly last and the most important option is the turbo boot option this is used to execute the turbo boot and you need to make sure that you specify the console address in the minus D option uh, when you want to turbo boot, when you want to upgrade a device using the turbo boot option. So let's go through the pre upgrade steps. These are the most important uh, things that is done by the tool. It will make sure that your device is ready to be upgraded. So the first thing it does is the node status check. This basically make sure that all the nodes in your device are in a proper state and they are ready to be upgraded so if these are the five states that are uh, that is it is all right to be in if if they are if your module is in any of the other states then your uh, script is going to uh, time uh, it's going to um, fail on this particular node node status check the next is the ping check this is when your uh, tool is going to check if your device can reach the repository path that you specify using the minus r option so if that is not uh, if it cannot reach then uh, then your tool fails the next bit it checks is if there is enough free uh, disk space on your device if there isn't then your tool will fail at this point after that it saves a list of the active the inactive and the committed packages on the device so all, it makes sure that there is a list of all of these packages are saved and in, in your in your output of your script you will be able to view all of this uh, packages the list of all of these packages the seventh step is the redundancy node check this is to make sure that your standby rp is uh, is ready for you to go ahead with the upgrade the eighth step is the configuration backup it saves the running configuration to a file before you do the upgrade the ninth step is the backup CLI snapshot this is where if you have specified the minus C option with a list of uh, show commands that you want to execute then this is where it does it it goes ahead and executes all those show commands and saves it in a file and the last check is the turbo boot check if you have specified the my turbo boot option then it makes sure all the rom one variables that are required for the turbo boot process are set correctly 
so this uh, this is like some more detailed explanation of exactly what what goes on in the pre upgrade steps that are executed by the tool before the upgrade takes place so moving on i'm sh i'm going to show you some examples of how the tool will fail if any of the pre upgrade steps are not uh, they don't pass correctly and what are what what would you see as the output of the tool so the first one is the failure in the node status check so uh, one of my line cards was in mbi booting state it was still booting up when i executed the script so if if that happens the script fails and it will give you uh, the uh, uh, um, it will tell you that it cannot do the upgrade because your nodes all your nodes are still not ready the next bit is an example of a ping failure that is when the the the, the tool tries to reach the tftp server and if it doesn't if it is not successful it will fail in that particular part the disk space check failure is when the tool is trying to um, uh, to make sure that there is enough free space on the disk so as you can see here the required bytes is uh, that for it it's much more than the available bytes and hence it cannot go ahead with the upgrade and it will fail at this point the next is the redundancy node check failure this is when the standby rp is not ready it must be still in the booting stage or it's not yet in the iosxr run state and hence the script fails at that point the next one is the turbo boot check failure now i think this was when the tool was executed on a device in which the ip address was not correctly set and hence the turbo boot will fail because it needs all of your rom1 variables to be set correctly in order for the turbo boot to take place and last but not the least this is the most important bit that when you specify the turbo boot option then your uh, package list that you specify using the minus f option needs to have the uh, vm image that will that is, is required for the turbo boot so if that image is not present in your uh, in your file specified by the minus f option your script will fail so once uh, we have uh, gone ahead and you know completed the pre upgrade steps the next bit is to upgrade the device so the tool will upgrade after all the pre upgrade steps are executed it will add the, the list it will uh, do an install add on the list of packages that are uh, specified in the uh, with, in the file that is specified with the minus f option once all the packages are added successfully it executes an install activate command uh, the device under test will reload and come back online and at this uh, then at this point there is there is no install commit that is executed as part of the upgrade process that is something which you need to execute it yourself if you are happy with the upgrade uh, the tool then uh, basically executes a post upgrade process wherein what it does is it checks whether all of the nodes are uh, in a correct state on the device so if uh, either of them uh, are is not in any of the three three states then it will fail in the post upgrade process uh, following uh, are some examples on how to use the tool to upgrade the device the first one is an inline upgrade here i have uh, run this the tool with uh, with an option uh, with uh, without the turbo boot option so i have the minus f option which is pointing to a file called the package list file and in that as you can see there are a list of packages and the most important is the mini-px.py file and after that is the list of all the packages that you want to uh, upgrade to the router the minus c option is for a list of commands that i want to execute before the upgrade takes place so i have entered all of those commands in that uh, file that is specified with the minus c option so that's an example of how to use the tool to upgrade the device the next example is if you just want to install a list of smooths uh, not really upgrade the whole system but just install a list of smooths you can even do that so in that the minus f option will point to a file which contains a list of all of the smooths that need to be installed on the device 
And the next bit is an example of how to use the tool to do Turbo Boot. So as you can see, the only difference here is I have a option called Turbo Boot at the at the end of the command line. So that is basically going to say that you need you will upgrade this device using the Turbo Boot command. And uh, the package list, the minus F option has a file in which I have a list of all the packages. As you see, the most important is the mini-px.vm uh, file because that is the file that is required for the Turbo Boot to take place. So let me now demonstrate to you uh, how we are going to do that. So I have two devices with me. Uh, I'm going to execute, uh, the. I'm going to use this tool and I'm going to show you how to upgrade the both the devices. One I will do using the Turbo Boot and one without the Turbo Boot. So the one that I'm going to use with, uh, this is the, um, this is a device here that I have. It's currently running the 4.3.1 uh, 4 software. I'm going to upgrade this device uh, using the normal process, not the Turbo Boot process. So this is the CLI that we have to use. The accelerated upgrade minus L min minus P and then I do the minus D is for the device uh, the, the location on how to reach the device and after that I'm going to have the file called the uh, upgrade uh, 5.1 file so I'm going to show you the contents of this file So this is the file that I have and it has a list of all the packages that I want to upgrade. So it was running a 431, I want to, uh, I want to move to a 510 image. So I have uh, list put all the packages that I want to install on the device. And then I using this file and then I'm going to go ahead and execute this command. The next device that I'm going to do is with, for the turbo boot. So that is my device here. So that's also running a 431. And I'm going to install uh, upgrade this using the Turbo Boot option. So the file that I'm going to specify for this is called the Turbo Turbo Boot file 510. So that's my Turbo Boot file. You have to make sure it has this particular file, which is the mini uh, px.vm file for that particular version of code. So after I have this file, I'm going to execute this command using to, do, to upgrade this device using the Turbo Boot option. So as you can see, the first step is to make sure that your uh, node status check, make sure all the nodes are in the correct, uh, uh, are in the correct state before it goes ahead with the upgrade. So while that, uh, while we are doing the upgrade here, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, the tool. Uh, I'm going to talk about the roadmap. So there are a list, there are quite a few enhancements that are on the roadmap for this tool. Uh, the first uh, one is the turbo booting of the standby RP. So that's another one enhancement that we're working on. If you want to turbo boot, if you have dual RPs and you want to turbo boot, uh, turbo boot the entire, both the RPs, then there is an option of doing that. And you can specify the console address of the standby RP using the minus S option. Then you can put the turbo boot option at the end of the tool. And that way you can pretty much use this uh, tool to turbo boot both the active as well as the standby. Uh, there is a plan to do this cluster and the satellite upgrade uh, using this tool too. Then there is the provisioning of the con AU configuration file that will be used to set the ROM on variables. So currently the, uh, there is no specific for option that you can uh, use to set the ROM on variables. Uh, but that is again in the roadmap to be able to specify a configuration file that you can use to set all the ROM on variables that you want for the device. There is also plans to 
uh, integrate this uh, tool with the Cisco Software Manager. Uh, the configuration of file uh, will take the CLI option. So that's the that's again in the roadmap to be able to take all of these CLI options in a configuration file so that you reduce the length of the CLI. And uh, also there is a plan to add support for the NCS 6000 platform to this tool. A few of the caveats that uh, I can think of is that you need the pexpect uh, package for this tool to run and that cannot be run on a windows machine so you need to have it either a linux operating system or uh, it also runs on the mac uh, also you need to just this keep it's it's like you need to keep this in mind that once the software is upgraded you have to manually commit it so the com committing of the new software is not done automatically for you as part of this tool Um, I think let me see what how where we are in terms of the process. So, so as you can see, this has passed the node status check and the ping check, and now it's doing the pre-upgrade check. This is basically where it checks for the free uh, space on the disk for the boot device. So it's going to find uh, all of the PI files that I had specified in. Uh, my uh, minus F option is going to check if it's got enough space to install all of those packages. So that's what uh, it's doing currently for this one. For the turbo boot option, it's uh, much more simpler because it doesn't uh, need to do all of that. It's ignored, the disk space check is ignored. So as you can see, for the turbo boot option, it uh, started with the node status check and uh, ping check. And then after that, it, it ignored the disk space check because pretty much the entire disk is cleaned up and you, do, and you, don't, really, uh, you don't really need to do that for Turbo Boot. Uh, then it saves a list of active packages, inactive packages and committed packages. And then check, checks for the standby RP state, does a backup of the configuration. And then it does a backup of all of the commands that I've specified in the minus C option so I, these were the three show commands and it, it did execute all of them and it is uh, stored that in the, in the file and after that it has started the turbo boot option for me so that's pretty much the the last bit where it, this is actually where it will reload uh, the router and get to ROM on and verify that it has all of the correct ROM on variables set to execute the turbo boot. So we've reached at this point in the Turbo Boot uh, demo as well as the other one as you can see it is still going through and making sure that the disk space check is, is done correctly. I'm going to pause for some time and uh, when this is uh, finished I'm going to come back and continue this demo. Uh, welcome back. Uh, as you can see now that the upgrade process has been completed. So this is the, the first uh, bit where we were doing this using the tool to upgrade uh, without the turbo boot option. So when we, uh, as we did see that it did finish all of the pre-upgrade checks and then it started with the install add operation. After the install add operation was completed, it uh, went ahead and executed the install activate. And after that, the system came back up with all of the packages and the post upgrade check was executed and uh, it passed the post upgrade check too. So as you can see, the total execution time was around 21 minutes and 37 seconds. We can now log in to this device to check whether it has uh, successfully upgraded to 510. So uh, let's do that. I'm just going to connect to the device. Show install active. As you can see here, it has upgraded to the 510 software. And if you look at show install committed, it will uh, show you the 431. So it hasn't upgraded the uh, the committed um, version. So if what you need to do now is commit it. And that, that's done. So one of our devices was successfully upgraded from 431 to 510 using this tool. 
the next one was the turbo this one where we were using the turbo boot option so as you can see we went we skipped through uh, we went through the pre upgrade checks and then the turbo boot check started it did check whether the turbo boot variables were set and uh, after it did everything it uh, it did a re it uh, reloaded the router and it came back up with the correct software and after that what the next bit it did was it started it to install all of the packages that we had specified in the file it started to do an install add and an install activate so what we can do now is go and check on that device if it has correctly uh, finished installing the software yep as you can see the install active has the 510 and install committed has the 5102 but this was using the turbo boot option so that is uh, why this is uh, it is still uh, currently undergoing the operation of committing all of these packages because it was using the turbo boot option and uh, it is it is it did not do an inline upgrade from a from the 431 to 510 hence the install committed will be similar to the install active so so you've seen how we've used the tool to upgrade the software version on two of the devices using both processes so the last bit is to just uh, go through some important links or resources that uh, you can use to get more information about this tool uh, the other thing you can do is you can subscribe to the cisco cpop channel uh, this channel channel is uh, uh, is basically created by the Cisco CPOC team, and it is a good collection of similar videos demonstrating Cisco products and technologies. So I strongly recommend you to subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and download this tool and give it a go. If you find any problems, you can report it on the accelerated upgrade uh, support at the rate Cisco dot com uh, alias and. Um, all the very best and thank you for listening. Bye.